Hello, hello. Um, during my recent 3D printer shows, I've been referencing a, a software program called 3D Builder. So I thought what would be a lovely idea for my 3D Thursday post is to um, give you an idea or just a quick overview of what that is, just to show you how easy it is to use. So this, as you can see on screen, is 3D Builder. It's a program that comes pre-installed with Microsoft Windows 10. So if you've updated, this should automatically be on your computer already. If not, you may be able to find it in the App Store. Um, I'm not sure if there's a Mac version. I pretty much doubt it, though, as it's a Microsoft product. Um, the Start screen obviously gives you options for new scene, open or opening a recent project. I'll start with a new scene so that you can see what the workspace looks like from scratch. So fairly um, nondescript workspace, just this checker design with the measurements running up it. You're working in obviously a three-dimensional space, so this has got perspective going on. There's some tools down here that I'll come to in a minute, but up here we are at the start of our journey almost in um, 3D Builder. We've got inserts, so we can add uh, 3D files that we've already got, or we can start with some basic shapes. And each time I hover my mouse pointer over one of these objects, you'll see a handy tooltip come up as well. So you'll never ever be lost as to what something does. Um, with the shapes, obviously it's going in here and showing you uh, what to do and how to do it. The object menu gives you um, ways of manipulating that object that you've just put on the uh, workspace. Edit menu obviously gives you further ways to enhance and change your design. Paint really is just to give the shapes on screen a color uh, so that you can differentiate between them. View gives you lots of different ways of looking at your design to help you in working with three dimensions. And then obviously the help files gives you um, resources and ideas of compatible printers if you're going to be printing directly from this. But generally what I've done is I've um, taken it, exported it from the software and taken it onto the software for my machine because I've got to slice it first. Over here, there's a couple of other options that I'll come to in a minute. So let's just start by inserting a cube. If I single click on that, then it just drops a cube in for me. The center point will be over the zero mark. So that's basically where the uh, line starts. So you can see zero there. But if I um, slide it back, I can stop it and it almost clicks into place at the zero mark on the edges. So now I know where we're working from. To move around this space, I basically find a, a blank area of the mat, right click to move left and right and up and down, or I can left click and hold and drag to rotate in three dimensions. So I can move this around to wherever I need to see to work with the shape. Now to change this shape, we've got various different handles. I've been using the drag or move handles at the moment which gives me ability to move them around in three-dimensional space, as you can see there. I can rotate, and again, I can rotate in three different directions, left to right, front to back, or side to side, like a rocking motion. And you can see me, I've been using the uh, undo keys there just to get back to my starting point. You do have the ability to manually type in uh, specific values as well. So if I wanted to rotate this by 45 degrees with my left uh, to right um, axis selected, I would just type in 45 in there, tap enter, and that's automatically rotated 45 degrees to the left or the right, whichever way you look at it. I'll just undo that and get back to the start. Resizing you can do in two different ways. You can keep the aspect ratio locked, which means when you drag one of these handles, the whole thing resizes proportionately. You can unlock that and extend shapes in all sorts of different directions, up, down, left, right, side to side, whatever you need to do. And that's basic editing available to you within those tools there. Obviously, I'm set on inches at the moment. If I wanted to change the um, settings, I would go into my file menu settings and choose my unit of measurement that I wanted to actually design in. 
that snapping, by the way, is what was giving me the ability to snap things to the object, um, to the starting point at the very beginning. Uh, there's various other options here, obviously, about saving and things, but I'll come on to those in a minute. Okay, let's go into our object menu. Duplicate is a fairly straightforward one. It creates a duplicate of your object. Now, it will sort of put it slightly offset from your uh, thing at the moment, but you can drag it wherever you need it to be. You can copy something and paste it, and that's pretty much the same as duplicate. Just a couple more steps to go through. And again, with snapping on, I can almost align these edge to edge. And now that there are several objects in my space, with my scroll wheel, I can zoom out a bit so that I get a better look and use my right mouse key again to move around. And I can now see, look, there are three different objects on the mat. And every time I move over one of these to select it, then you can see which one's going to be selected. They're all painted green, and I'll show you more about that in a minute. I can delete an object just with the delete key. If I have moved and rotated something, let me just turn this around a bit for you. There you go. And it's sort of sitting up off the plane. That's this floor here. What I can do is actually click settle and that will drop it to the floor and get it to a point where it's stable. And that's quite important for 3D printing because when you're printing that model, if you've got lots of curves and bumps, it will find the best place to put it so that you'll have to use less of your supports during printing. I just click the tick in order to confirm that. Now, if I've got an uneven shape, I can uh, obviously mirror it and I can also measure this. So I can uh, measure from this, co oh, this corner, hang on, this corner to this corner in order to get an accurate measurement of that. So if you're designing something to be a specific dimension, you can double check your measurements and check to see um, that it's all perfect for your design. OK, so I'm going to delete that one and we're going to insert another shape. Let's go for a sphere. So that's put it on the zero point again. Now that's automatic sort of knocked out the the square but at the moment they are still two separate shapes so i can select them individually if i go into edit i can choose things like simplify and what that does is it reduces the amount of faces on a shape or a model to be the optimum that it can be now if it's at the optimum it's unlikely it will do anything but if you need to you can do that and that just re reduces the file size and the amount of information that the 3D printer has to deal with. Splitting it, I can split it in all sorts of ways. I can uh, move this up and down like this. I can keep the bottom, keep the top, or keep both parts and use them. So almost I could create uh, like a box from a sphere shape. Uh, you can adjust the way that that plane cuts through that shape. So again, we've got lots of variation there. So we're starting now to look at, you know, the design tools. I can smooth the design off if I need to, to make it very, very lovely and smooth. Or I can reduce that smoothness. And you'll see, if I zoom in a little bit, there are lots more faces here. But if I go into smooth, then it should reduce those, or sorry, increase the number of faces to make it even smoother when we get the printout. That does, again, though, add more file size to your project. So these are things you just need to bear, bear keep in mind. Emboss is kind of cool one because what it does is it gives you the option to emboss text or shapes into um, your object. So I will just resize, uh, put that in there. And you can put it in all sorts of different planes and places and whatever you need. You can resize it. And then once you click emboss, that's now embossed into that circular, sorry, sphere shape. So you can add text to your shapes as well. So if you want to personalise something, you can do so. Uh, now let's look at something else. OK, so I've got a sphere here. And what you'll see is obviously it comes around down the bottom. Let me just move this uh, cube out of the way. So we've got all these underside edges that will present a problem for the printer, i.e. it will have to create supports in order to support that shape while it's printing, and then you'll have to remove them afterwards. If, however, I'm not too bothered about that, what I could do is extrude down from the midpoint 
and then I won't need any support. So let me show you what I mean. If I select that sphere, extrude down. Now you can see where that plane is, you've got almost like this um, extension of that circumference. If I move that up, then obviously it will incorporate other aspects. If I move it down, it will be slightly less. So just by putting it at that midway point, it really alleviates the need to use any um, struts. Once you click to accept, that will add the um, uh, extrusion to the shape. So you'll now have uh, kind of a, I don't know what this, almost like half a million, <laughs> if you know what I mean, with the text on it. Now, one other thing that we've got up here is the merge. So if I bring this over, whilst this is, um, these shapes are overlapping each other, I can subtract one from the other. And depending on your process of power, it might take a little time to do that. So you can essentially punch holes in things, or you can um, create surface patterns with this sort of effect. So you can see there, that's punched that shape out of that cube. If I undo that, I'll get my original shape back. Now I've got both selected, I can intersect, and this will give me a different result. So you can see there, what it's given me is the space or the um, area where the two shapes um, intersected, basically. So it's kind of cool, again, if you want to create specific unique shapes, because obviously in our insert menu, we've only got a limited range, but with this, these tools, I can now create all sorts of different um, variations of those uh, patterns. So again, we're going to select both. And this time we're going to merge. And what this will do is it will weld those two shapes together. So they will now basically act as one. So I can move them together and turn them around. So that's quite a cool one. Uh, undo to get back to where I wanted. Uh, now, paint I mentioned before. This one is really just to sort of give the shapes colour while they're on screen. Uh, oh, I selected the wrong one, sorry. I want to select this. So I can choose to paint this uh, shape totally green. So you saw how before it had uh, a part of it was white because that part was added to the shape. Well, now I've been able to recolor that all green. And if I go in here and apply a colour to the cube. Oh, oh hello. Come on. Oh, there we go. Colour to the cube. We can now see those two shapes um, independently of each other, which I think is great, because then you can see what's what. Over on the right, we've got another little menu. Uh, so as you've done in probably other software programs, if you've got one or more, uh, sorry, two or more shapes selected, you can group them together. So this means you can change them proportionately together and then ungroup them and move them around separately. So it's just another way of being able to do that. Select all basically will select every single shape that you've got on the mat or on your plane. Deselect all basically reverses that and just doesn't select anything. Sticky selection is kind of a cool thing. It means that I don't have to add uh, or press any keys on my keyboard to select more than one shape. I can just keep on clicking on the shapes that I want to select in order to select them all. Do need to remember to turn that off though once you finish with it. I'll deselect all again here. And that's pretty much it. Um, so as you can see, very, very simple to use. I'll just show you a couple more things on the view. Center view just brings you back to that starting point where you've got that um, perspective plane and the measurement unit. So you can always get back to the original view if you get a bit lost with moving everything around. X-ray view is quite useful if you've got things intersecting and you want to see where they're intersecting or what's going to be punched out. So if I rotate this and zoom in a little bit, you can see here that the cube, uh, if I select the cube, we can see what's going to be either chopped out or left behind from that half minion. And again, vice versa, if I choose the half minion, I can see what's going to happen with that square. Very useful if you've got lots of things going on on the mat. If I turn that off for now, 
Shading, I can turn on and off, and that just gives me more of a three-dimensional look on screen. You can see here where it's darker on this side, lighter here, and light on top. If I turn that off, it's just a totally uniform color, so it doesn't really give me a great view without it. Wireframe shows me, obviously, all of the faces or polygons that the shapes are made up of. 3D shapes in computer software are generally made up of these things, and they're called polygons, so it's a triangle. And they will be plotted according to the surface uh, that you've got available. So I can see, you know, if something's quite dense or has a lot of polygons, whether I need to go and simplify it or not. Uh, click that off. Shadows, again, I can turn off. So if something's casting shadow on another thing, uh, I can turn it off if it's getting confusing on screen. But I quite like it on because it sort of helps me get that 3D feel while designing. Colours I can turn off, so everything's always just this plain white uh, kind of effect. Again, kind of useful if you're uh, not necessarily good with colours or you think it's going to get confusing. Just something, another uh, viewpoint, viewpoint to help you get the best out of the software. Now, that really is the basics of it. Obviously, you've got um, the save as function which will allow you to save it as OBJ or STL file formats. So you can save it um, to whatever file format you need. 3MF is the standard for um, 3D Builder software that we're working in. So if you need to come back to this project in the future, it's definitely worth saving a copy in that format. And PLY is just a third uh, 3D file format that we can use. Right, so I hope this has helped and I hope it's kind of taken away some of the fear of using 3D design software. As you can see, it's just literally click, drag, um, just resize it a bit and do things. But what you can do with this is actually quite amazing because there are just so many things that you can get to grips with and start changing. I mean, for example, just very quickly, if I pop uh, another cube in here, if I drag it across, uh, move it back so that it's in line with this, and then I'll resize it as well so that it's just about the same size. But then if I use my uh, numerical values to enter the um, text, then I can drop this down by, let's say, 0.2 inches, so 1.74, oh, yeah, 1.5, and then I'll select the other axes, uh, 1.7219 that one was, and then if I uh, move that up just a little bit, and I'll turn my wireframe and my x-ray on so I can see just how far up it is, yep, that's fine by me, uh, turn that off, go into edit, and I'll subtract. The thing you've got um, highlighted will subtract from the object that's, that it's overlapping that isn't selected. So if I subtract that from that, I've now got almost like a little tray. And I can build this up into a frame or a, a, an embellishment or even a jewellery component or box, a 3D box. Maybe I'll do some videos on projects for that in the future. So you can see just some of the some very simple um, shape building methods that really go to help you creating in 3D design software. Right, I think I'll leave it there because I don't want to bamboozle you, but that's as easy as it is. Please do check out other versions of software like Tinkercad, that's very similar to this, that's an online based one. Um, and there are more available, just type in free 3D design software and you should find some. Obviously if you're in Microsoft Windows 10, 3D Builder is already built in. Right, hope that's helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. For more hints, tips and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on any of these social networking sites.